Welcome, I'm Alex, and this is Due Process, the tactical online shooter with an endless amount of maps. Really? Does that work? Well, we'll be getting back to that, but first, this video has been sponsored by Annapurna Interactive to go along with the Due Process 40% off Steam sale going on right now, putting it at 15 bucks. After you hear out what I have to say about Due Process, use that link I have at the top of the video description to head over to the Steam page if it looks like your kind of thing. Now the main standout element of Due Process that really caught my attention was something I have always wanted in a PvP shooter for years now, which is randomized maps that actually feel structured instead of a big mathematic blob of surfaces all over. In Due Process, every week a new batch of procedurally assembled maps get added into the game, replacing the old ones, making for an online shooter that focuses more on unpredictability, on-the-fly tactics, and raw FPS skill. These randomized little combat arenas all have a variety of entry points around them, some of which are freely open, some require use of a door charge to blast open, and some are a bit more dynamic, like a big storefront shutter that can be toggled up or down, or a risky rooftop entry point. The inner workings of these areas might have unique aspects like a power panel tucked away in an arcade allowing for the map's lights to be shut off, an elevated office overlooking the bombsite, or a centralized vault with a giant door that can be opened or closed via button press, which can either greatly deter the attacking team's ability to actually get to the bombsite, or alternatively, give them a super safe defuse if they work alongside a teammate who can shut the door once they already get inside. Since planning is a big part of due process, you and your team can freely draw on these maps to set up the perfect plan, or what you think is the perfect plan, and these markings will even show up in the game world, which is a nice touch. Someone can mark a circle on the map with a big S, indicating a proposed smoke grenade location, and then in real time, they know exactly where to aim and throw that thing without having to bring back up the map. Speaking of grenades, those things are precious because another main element of due process is limited team resources. At the start of each round, your side will have cases filled with weapons, ammo, explosives, and tactical items, but you all share these and will have to make the best use of them throughout the three rounds before the defenders swap with the attackers. The defender side has less overall health than the attackers since they have the advantage of camping on their side, and have molotovs that can temporarily lock down routes, razor wire that can limit movement through certain choke points, and flares which can be used to illuminate an area if the lights get shut down. On the attacker side, they have a different assortment of weapons, that slightly higher health pool, have access to explosive charges that can blast open doors and walls, which requires use of a clacker to detonate, they can take night vision goggles if a power shutdown is planned, and they have explosive smoke and flash grenades. For this faction, they have fancy face shields that neutralize the effects of flash grenades, so they never have to worry about flashing themselves or teammates, which is one of their most powerful tools to counter the defenders hunkering down in one location. These limited team resources means that proper planning and only taking exactly what you need each round is vital to success. For example, there is only one big sniper rifle on each side, so if you choose to be the one that actually uses it, you better hope you get good use out of it and ideally not die so you can get even more out of it in the following round. If you take it and immediately die, that's it for your team's entire arsenal of snipers for the match, so choose carefully. The other faction can loot these items off your corpse, so that is another element to consider as well. The limited team resource system adds a whole nother risky death penalty element to the game, where losing just one of your teammates is already detrimental enough, but losing your team's gear to the other side adds a whole nother wrinkle to the match dynamics. Now shifting gears, due process's shooting mechanics focus on a fairly unique 3 level aiming system. You have the standard aim down sights where your accuracy is the best with the slowest character movement, then you have the brace mechanic which is holding your gun somewhat sideways, which offers medium accuracy and medium speed. Then lastly, you have the classic hip firing, which is the least accurate, but the fastest moving way to fire. Different surfaces in the game can be shot through depending on the weapon type as well, and different map styles will have more or less things you can shoot through. There's a decent amount of things to learn in due process, with a high skill ceiling, but it's still fairly easy to just pick up and play and control as well. So overall, that was the basics of the game, but tons more stuff is planned to expand due process in the future. 
I think its dynamic map structure is exactly what the online shooter genre needs, since static maps that can be completely figured out have been going on for nearly three decades now, and things need to change. I am all for Due Process's procedurally assembled style of map generation, and I truly think that is where the future of the genre is headed. Now before closing this all out, I want to take a moment to thank Annapurna Interactive for sponsoring this video, and for also being that little push I needed to go dive into this. Again, use that link I have at the top of the video description to go grab Due Process on PC through Steam at 40% off. Thanks for hearing out my perspective on this today, and for watching all the way up to the very end. This has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.